Well, this is Stephen Pendens, and listen to me. You see, if it's not Glory FM Radio, it's not radio. Change the dial. Oh. Well... me and not to harm me out of your steadfast love you delivered me your mercies are new each morning guiding me on my way you have chosen me to bless me now I can say And good evening, everybody. Are you blessed? Yes, indeed, you are blessed. If you forgot it, I'm here to remind you this evening that you're blessed. My name is Anthony Ricardo, and if you're in the reach of my voice for the very first time, you've happened up on Glory FM Radio and the program Breaking Bread with Anthony Ricardo. We broadcast live from the Cayman Islands, and if you've never heard of the Cayman Islands, we are three beautiful islands reposing peacefully in the beautiful Caribbean Sea right betwixt Jamaica and Miami. Let's go to the throne of grace, Heavenly Father, the blesser of humanity, lover of man's souls. Blessed be your name. You build up the kingdom of heaven with the souls of men because indeed we are the lively stones. Heavenly Father, how precious is your name to those who know you. We are indeed blessed. I approach your mercy seat, asking you to apply the portion of your blood to me, to cleanse me, to purge me, to make me worthy to approach the mercy seat. O God Almighty, encourage me, cover me, embrace me in the blessed Holy Spirit. Go before me, be my mouthpiece. I am just a vessel. I'm just a vessel. Bless each and every one coming on the live and on the rebroadcast. And those who are not able to make it, bless them as well. Somehow, some way, let the word reach them. So, Heavenly Father, as you have taught me, I teach. And while I teach, continue to teach me so that I will continue to be awed by the awesomeness, the awesomeness of your majestic wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. All these mercies I ask you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the blessed Holy Ghost and Fire. Bless your name. I now can see I am blessed And he's chosen me to be blessed Blessed, blessed, blessed Yes, indeed, God has chosen you to be blessed so, do not let the devil tell you otherwise. Because you were not called to be a curse, but a blessing. You were not called to a curse, but a blessing. Jesus Christ said, I came not to condemn the world, but that the world through me might be saved. Why? Because God loved the world so much that he gave me, that anyone who believes in me should not perish but have everlasting life. What a legacy. What a legacy. God will not put man into hell because man is failure. But he will put man into hell. Those who fail to receive his outstretched hand of love, of salvation, the wonderful gift. So, if you have not accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior as yet, please do so, please do so, please do so. Troublesome times are here. But let it meet you with the Savior here. 
Yes, indeed, because at the end of the day, when the dust is settled, the scripture that says the end of a matter is better than the beginning will be fulfilled over you, not against you. Because uh, when the dust is settled, if Jesus is in the vessel, he will be smiling at the storm. All right, so let's get into topic. If you see, if you look at the, the bottom of the scroll right there, you see the topic, the phenomenon of the fourth man in the fire. What am I talking about? This is taken from Daniel chapter 3. I am blessed and he's chosen me to be blessed. Blessed, blessed, blessed. And what I'm going to be doing this evening, as opposed to reading out all of Daniel chapter 3, for you to get the story, I'm going to play a nice little video clip. Oh, it's about perhaps seven minutes long. And at the end of it, I'm going to expound on it. All right, so let me set things up. Nebuchadnezzar was a powerful king of Babylon. The time of his reign was 600 years before the birth of Christ, and the size of his empire was very great indeed. Within the royal court were people of many different languages and customs, people that had been conquered by the king and then forced to help him rule. On one occasion, King Nebuchadnezzar summoned the various rulers of the provinces to gather in the court, and he watched them assemble from his royal pavilion. This was a special occasion, and no one would dare not to come. The king stood up. The great moment had arrived. By standing, the king was giving the signal that the court was to come to order. Trumpeter stepped forward and sounded a royal fanfare. And the herald, whose job it was to read the official announcements, stepped forth with a big scroll in his hand. And the captains and the princes and the governors all stood very quietly, waiting to hear what the message from the king would be. And as they listened, they heard the herald read, O people, nations, languages, hear ye the king's command. And the herald went on to tell them that the king had had a gigantic statue made in his own likeness. The statue was 90 feet tall and made of gold. This was to be their God. At the sound of the musical instruments, everyone was to bow down and worship the golden image. And the next thing the people heard was enough to put fear in the hearts of even the bravest men. Whoso falleth not down and worshipeth the image of the king shall the same hour be cast into the midst of a burning, fiery furnace. So when the musical instruments played... The people fell down and worshipped the golden image, just as the king had commanded them to do. Two Chaldeans were worshipping close together when suddenly one of them saw something that made him tug at the other one's robe in an effort to get his attention. Look, the Chaldean said, it's just as we thought. The three of them, see, they're not bowing down. They're refusing to worship the golden image. And the Chaldean was absolutely right. Three young princes, the rulers of the capital city itself, were openly disobeying the king. These men had been brought as captives from the distant land of Judah. Their names had been changed, and because of their abilities, they had been given high positions within the kingdom. Hananiah, beloved of God, was called Shadrach, or Circuit of the Sun. Mishael's cherished name was changed from one who is like God to the heathen name Meshach, meaning sun god. And Azariah, whose name meant the Lord is my help, 
came to be known as Abednego, the god of commerce. Nebuchadnezzar had changed the names of Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah, but their hearts remained the same. These men believed in Jehovah as the one, the almighty God. And to kneel down before an image was something God had told them never to do. The two Chaldeans lost no time reporting what they had seen to the king. They were jealous of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and they slyly reminded King Nebuchadnezzar that these men that had refused to bow down before the image were the very men the king had placed over the affairs of Babylon. How dare these men disobey me, shouted the king. Bring them here. Bring them here at once. And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were hurried to the royal pavilion, and the king asked if it were true that they had refused to bow down and worship the golden image. And they told the king, yes, that it was true. King Nebuchadnezzar's pride was about the most important thing he had. And for these three young men to openly disobey him, even in the face of death, was a serious blow to a man of his importance. So the mighty ruler of the vast Babylonian empire decided he would give the men another chance. If only they would do as they had been told, he would forgive them for their disobedience. But the brave young men replied, Our God is able to deliver us out of your hand, O king. But even if he chooses not to, we will never serve your gods or worship your golden image. The king was furious. He commanded the furnace be made seven times hotter than it usually was. And he ordered that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego be taken to the furnace and put to death for their willful disobedience. And it wasn't long until the fiery furnace was made seven times hotter than it usually was. And the three young men from Judah were securely tied. And one by one, they were thrown into the midst of the flames. Shadrach, who was Hananiah, the beloved of God. Meshach, who was Mishael, or one who is like God. And Abednego, the one whose real name was Azariah. The Lord is my help. And when the soldiers had thrown them in, they turned and ran from the terrible heat. But before they could escape, the flames leaped out of the furnace and burned them to a crisp. And then the king saw something that made him jump to his feet. He couldn't believe it was possible. No, it couldn't be. Forgetting about his dignity and his pride, King Nebuchadnezzar ran with the rest of the people to get a better look at the strange thing that had happened. Look, shouted the king. Do all of you see what I see? Did we not cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? I see four, and they're loose and walking around, and the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. And King Nebuchadnezzar knew in his heart that Jehovah was the true and the living God. And he called to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego to come forth, to come out of the flames. And the people were amazed as the three Hebrew boys walked out of the furnace unharmed by all they had been through. Not a single hair of their heads was singed. They didn't even smell of smoke. Nebuchadnezzar fell to his knees, and he lifted up his head and cried, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who hath delivered his servants who trusted in him. And shortly thereafter, a new decree was read to all the nations under Nebuchadnezzar's rule. No one was to speak against the God of the brave young men from Judah. And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were promoted to even higher places within the kingdom. But their real happiness was in their freedom to worship God. What a beautiful story. What an awesome story. Now the part that I want to highlight is verses 24 and 25 of the chapter, Daniel 3. Then Nebuchadnezzar, the king, was astonished and rose up in haste, and spake and said unto his counselors, Did not we cast three men bound in the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto the king, True, O king. 
He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose, walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt, and the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. And the form of the fourth man is like the Son of God. What is so phenomenal about this? What Nebuchadnezzar said. Before I go there, I would like to expound a little bit on things that we go through. Sometimes God shows us the thing before it happens. And we pray and we say, God, please to prevent this thing from happening. Mush it up, God. Mush it up. But the thing still overtakes us. Sometimes we pray for God to take us around it. We pray for God to take us over it, under it. But we don't want to go through it. But there are times when God says, I'm going to show you that I'm not just the God of the mountain. I'm also the God of the valley. Anywhere, anywhere you plant your flower seed, I can let it bloom. I do not only let it bloom in the fertile soil, but also in the midst of the desert because I am God. There's a kind of a toy. I don't know if it still exists. It doesn't matter how you bend it up or you throw it, whatever you do. It always lands right side up. I was trying to find it to show you the illustration, but uh, I couldn't find it because I, I don't know the name of it. But I know there was such a toy. It doesn't matter how you throw it, what you do. It doesn't fall on its head. It falls on the right side. And so it is with God. It doesn't matter how you, what you throw at God. He turns it into something beautiful. So we see where Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they remained innocent before God, and the fire did not harm them. They were thrown in the fire. God did not deliver them from going into the fire, but he delivered them from being burnt by the fire. And as they said, they prophesied over themselves, basically. They said, even if... God would not deliver us. We would still not bow, but we know that he's able. And he did not deliver them from being thrown in, but he delivered them from being destroyed by the fire. Glory to God. In the spiritual realm, they were purified even the more by the spiritual fire. Because all of us as Christians, we have to go through the purging, the purging stage of our Christian life. All right, so this is so phenomenal that the fire burnt up the soldiers who threw them in and that's why sometimes we say back to sender and it goes back to them I read once where a preacher was saying that uh, back to sender is not biblical and it's wrong it is biblical matter of fact even if you do not intone back to sender it automatically goes back to sender if it is not deserving of you. Both the blessing and the curse that someone sends to you, if it is not deserving, it returns back to sender. And so, the soldiers threw them in the fiery flame. It did not consume them, but it had to consume something. It was sent forth to consume, and it went back to the ones who threw them in and consumed them. But further to God, at times not preventing the situation, but taking you through it. Let me present two more scriptures before I go on. Acts 5, 23. The disciples were preaching and they locked them up in the prison. And then when the religious leaders on the following day sent the soldiers to take them from the prison the soldiers returned with a report but not with the prisoners and this was their report 
Indeed, we found the prison shut securely and the guards standing outside before the doors. But when we opened them, we found no one inside. Glory to God. God delivered these prisoners in as much a phenomenal way as he had done the three Hebrew boys and by extension Daniel in the lion's den. The Lord did not disturb what the enemy put there but he just walked his servant through glory to God. And so never had it ever happened in human history or at least not that I've ever heard of or read in the Bible where people were locked up in a prison they were delivered and the prison doors never had to be opened up God just translated them from out of the prison everything was intact everything was intact except that they miraculously was delivered from the prison and the third scripture I want to introduce to this line of thinking, this line of thought, is uh, Matthew 27, highlighting 64 and 66, after Jesus Christ was crucified. The religious leaders commanded, therefore, that the sepulchre be made sure until the third day, lest his disciples come by night and steal him away and say unto the people, he is risen from the dead, so the last error shall be worse than the first. Pilate said unto them, Ye have a watch. Go your way. Make it sh as sure as you can. So they went and made the sepulchre sure, sealing the stone and setting a watch. My friends, In order to authenticate himself, it is important at times for God not to deliver you from going through. Because if every time problems come your way, God allows it to dry up and not reach you. It is one way of looking at it, you know, for deliverance. But still, both ourselves and our enemies will not fully comprehend the awesomeness of the power of God. He's God anyhow. Any way you take him, he's God. My camera keeps freezing. Any way you take God, he is God. Glory to God. And so we see because Jesus Christ said he was going to be risen from the dead the third day. Hallelujah. The enemy used exactly what Jesus said to make sure that they put a double and a triple watch, security, seal on the tomb. If Jesus never said that, they never would have done that. And I recently experienced that. I said something to somebody that if so and so happened, this is what I would do. And because the person wanted me to do it, the person simply wanted to use me to get their own way. And so they said, okay, this is what I'm going to do. I really want to be rid of him. So I'm going to get what I want and then... I am going to let it become plain so that he will do what he said he would do if I do that. So sometimes the enemy will use the very thing that you have said. So because Jesus Christ made the declaration, I am going to give my body to be destroyed and I'm going to raise up my own self on the third day. Glory to God. If they really genuinely did not believe that he could do it, they would not have done that. But nonetheless, their excuse was, lest the disciples come, 
peel his body away and say that he's risen from the dead. And to that, even after they set the seal, and the seal, and the seals, and Jesus rose from the dead, and the, the soldiers gave the account of what happened, guess what? Jesus didn't just go up to heaven at the, the same time. He stayed yet 40 days in Jewry, walking around. People saw him. People knew that he was the Savior, that he was the Messiah. Well, to be honest, I, uh, let me retract that. Did he actually walk openly in Jewry? I don't know. But he'd he been to some places. Because the reason why I retracted that, it is written in Scripture that the Pharisees and Sadducees, the religious leaders, they started a rumor that his disciples had taken him away. And the Bible said to this day, I don't know if it means to this present day as well, there is still that rumor going around in Jewry that he never did rise from the dead. It was his disciples that had done it. Nonetheless, there were more than enough witnesses because if Jesus spent 40 days after the resurrection, it was infallible proof that he had risen from the grave. But the point is, just like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were not spared the fiery flames, but they were delivered through it, and just like the disciples were not spared from going to jail, but they were released from jail while the doors were still shut, glory to God, in like manner, God allowed the enemy to set a triple watch, seal on his tomb for the purpose. They, they did it for the purpose to prove that he couldn't rise from the dead. But he allowed it for the purpose of proving to them that indeed he is God. Glory to God. Somebody worship him. Somebody worship this great king. Hallelujah. Glory to God. 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 Well, let's go back to Daniel. So this great, proud king, Nebuchadnezzar, he was so powerful, he forgot that it was Israel's God who had set him up on his throne, or perhaps he didn't realize it. There was a time when God made him become insane and then brought him back to his senses and he worshipped God. But this proud king, he was so enamored by himself, by his awesome power and authority that he said, you know, I think I'm God. As a matter of fact, I don't even think the thought, well, the thought entered his mind but you always have some little people around you, some little yes man and some little man who will have to push some strange fire. And I'm sure they were saying, you know, boosting his ego. Oh, great king, you know that you there's no other king as great as you in the earth. You are God and you must be worshipped. And they encouraged him to build the idol. But they didn't do it because they wanted to worship this king. Because they themselves knew that he was no God. But they wanted a law to be created in order to upset the faith of the faithful few in the land. Now watch this. King Nebuchadnezzar made a statement at verse 25 right here. He said, Lo, I see four men loose walking in the midst of the fire, and they have no hurt. And the form of the fourth is like the Son of God. The form of the fourth is like the Son of God. What is so awesome about that? What is so phenomenal about that? Glory to God. I was trying to research how many years from that time of that event of the fiery furnace to when Christ came. I couldn't find it. But I know it was many, many years before Christ. 
at the time of Nebuchadnezzar, Jesus Christ was not yet come in the form of sinful flesh. He was not yet incarnated as the Messiah. He was still wrapped up in the mysteries of the divine as the Word of God. He was only known as the Word of God. Glory to God. And yet, Nebuchadnezzar, who was a heathen king, he worshipped other gods and himself. Glory to God. Glory to God. Yet, he was the one who made the utterance that the form of the fourth man in the fire is like the Son of God. Whoa! Glory to God. But watch this. How could, how could it be possible for someone to see this person and identify him as the Son of God. He did not identify him as Gabriel. He did not identify him as Michael the Archangel. He did not identify him as just a guy in a shining robe. He did not identify him as any other but the Son of God. How is that possible? Let me go to another scripture. God, I love the word of God. I just love the word. Philippians 2, 10 and 11 says, At the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. And that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The operative word that I want you to, to, to concentrate on here is the word confess in verse 11. At the name of Jesus, every tongue should confess. One cannot confess to something that they do not know. That's a clue right there. One cannot confess. So not only was Nebuchadnezzar able to confess Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the Son of God, whom he had never before seen, but every single human being who had ever breathed breath on the face of this earth, on the judgment day, every jack man will bow and confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God. Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God. There are people who are saying that Jesus Christ was just a good man. He was uh, one of the greatest prophets or the greatest prophets. But Jesus Christ must be placed in his proper position as a high potentate Lord of glory. There are people who said, I worship Jehovah the Father, but I do not worship Jesus Christ. I'm here to tell you that you're not saved because the Father himself said, if you do not honor the Son, you dishonor me. And Jesus Christ made the declaration. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man can come to the Father but by me. And the scripture further states that in Jesus Christ, dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. In other words, the access to God the Father and God the Holy Spirit comes through Jesus Christ of Nazareth because we don't know the way to go to the Father. And even if we saw the way, we cannot attain unto it because we are sinful. But when we are clothed with the righteousness of Christ, we would have put on Christ and we do that by accept, accepting, accepting Christ. I'm sorry. As Lord and Savior. And once we accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, He places His robe of righteousness around us and say, You can now go to the Father. At one stage, He said to His disciples, He used to pray for them, 
But then he said, no, you can now go to the Father yourself because the Father himself wants to have a relationship with you. I have now given you access by my righteousness that I've placed upon you. And then Jesus made another declaration. He said, there was a baptism of water, which is the baptism of the Father, which is the baptism of repentance. And then there was the baptism of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, because everyone who had been baptized into John's baptism, when Jesus came on the scene, they had to be rebaptized into Jesus' baptism. That's a whole new teaching. But then Jesus Christ said, there's a third baptism that you have to be baptized with. When I return to the Father, I will pray to him to give me access to the blessed Holy Spirit so that I can baptize you with his fire. Glory to God. And so therefore, he leads us to the Father and he baptizes us with the Holy Spirit. So he has full authority to access the Father and the Holy Spirit on our behalf. What an awesome God. And so the Lord God set it that way so that every man must honor the Son, bow and worship him. And so if you do not accept and worship Jesus Christ of Nazareth, you cannot be saved. Because the Bible says there is no other name under the heavens by which man must be saved but by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Woo! What a blessing. What a legacy. But watch this now. Back to topic. Back to the main point that I want to bring out here. Confession. Nebuchadnezzar had never seen God or his son. A heathen king, one who worshipped false gods. He never stumbled. He never stuttered. He never asked any. Thank you, Holy Spirit. When Usually when he get a dream, he would call all his uh, astrologers and magicians and said, can you interpret this dream? But right there, Nebuchadnezzar never needed any one of those scammers. Nebuchadnezzar was able to prophesy and declare that this is the Son of God. And also, every single jackman on the face of the earth, there are some people who are declaring that they are atheists. They do not believe in God. Watch this. In verse 11, it says every. It did not say some tongue. Every tongue. The Spanish nation. The French nationals. The English nationals. In the continent of Africa. In every language of the continent. Even if it is Jamaican broken English, we call it Patois. People in every language, from every sphere, from everywhere, will confess that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God and is to be worshipped. But one cannot confess to something that do, they do not know. So that is a clue that every man who blew breath on the face of this earth they know Jesus. Woo! Somebody's saying, how can we know Jesus? We have never seen him before. As a matter of fact, the word of God says, no man has seen God at any time. We might see the similitude of God in dreams and visions, whatever. You know, God loves to give illustrations, but no man can actually see God and live in the flesh. So the question is still being asked. How is it possible? How was it possible for Nebuchadnezzar to declare the truth? Especially for the fact that he was no prophet of God. He didn't worship God. He didn't serve God. He did not have the, the spirit of God dwelling in him. But yet, in that moment, he was able to accurately identify the fourth man in the fire as the son of the living God. And how is it possible? 
that every man jack was ever born on the face of the earth will bow on judgment day and declare Jesus Christ is the son of the living God. Because let's go right back to Genesis. The word of God says God made out of the dust of the earth shape of himself. He turned to the other two members of the Trinity, not to the angels. He turned to his son, the word of God at the time, and he turned to the blessed Holy Spirit and he said, let us make man in our own likeness and image. The Holy Spirit is not a wisp of wind. The Holy Spirit is a person, the third person in the Trinity. The word Trinity is not written in the Bible, but the word Trinity we use that word to mean three in one. There are three separate persons who operate as one God, meaning they work together in perfect unison. They form the Godhead. So God the Father is God. God the Son is God. And God the Holy Spirit is God. And they three rule together. They are three gods, but they rule together in total, complete, perfect unison as one God but every knee shall bow and every tongue confess so watch this so when God made Adam Adam in form was shaped in the likeness and in the image of God but yet Adam had no life in himself. He was a dead, handsome guy. The scientists who were supposed to be highly intelligent, more intelligent, more than all of us. They used to tell us about the evolution and man come from this and that and foolishness. They thought they were wise and they were fools. When all along, the Christians had the word of truth. That man was made in the likeness and in the image of the mighty, all-powerful, beautiful God. But Adam was just a shell. He was like someone made, you know, a skillful workman, carve out the shape of a man and people stand and they admire it. Just like they carved out a statue of Nebuchadnezzar and they admire it, but that's all it was, a dead statue. There was no life in it. But God bent down and he breathed a portion of himself into that form. That was when the form begin to have true meaning because all of a sudden the form opened his eyes begin to move around begin to look around and the form was called Adam Adam became a living soul God breathed a portion of himself God is life and that's why death could not have held Jesus Christ captive. It was not possible. So when God breathed a portion of himself into Adam, not only did Adam just became a living, breathing soul, but Adam now had the DNA of God in himself. Adam had the evidence of God in himself. And it is that evidence that is planted. It is implanted in man. That man knows within themselves that there is a God. There are some who make the faith or the generic faith, if you will, that God had implanted in them to become shipwreck by forcing themselves, by searing their conscience with a hot iron to declare that there is no God. Hence, the Bible says the fool had said in his heart, there is no God. Why would the Bible call him a fool? Because he has rejected the evidence that God has planted in him. The fact that you're breathing right now, my friend, 
that is the most potent evidence of the existence of God. Many people love to look around at creation and say, because creation is real. Even the scientists now are saying after they have studied outer space, there's absolutely no way that all this could have just happened. It had to have been put in place by a higher intelligent being. And he's God. And so, the fools killed their conscience, convinced themselves that there is no God. But guess what? Because God cannot die, it's not possible. They may suppress the truth in themselves, and it, 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 it honestly, it. I'm trying to find the word. It is more of an effort. Yes, effort. It is more of an effort to bring oneself to the point of believing that there is no God to simply accept the fact that there is a God. You don't have to work anything up. It's all about simply accepting. No, first. You have to realize that the knowledge is embedded in you. Every breath that you breathe, that is what was embedded in you. That there is God. He is God. He is the I am that I am. So once you come to that realization, you have to now accept and embrace it. You don't work up faith. Faith is divine inspiration from God. You just have to receive it. When you reject it, it becomes unbelief. But instead of receiving the truth, they reject it. They suppress it. But it's not possible for it to be destroyed because it is God in them. And so on the judgment day, that which they have been trying to repress all their lives would suddenly stand forth. And when it stands forth in them, they cannot ignore the truth any longer. That has always been in them. They have to bow and say, Of a truth, Jesus Christ is Lord. Glory to God. Every man jack on the face of this earth right now, if God should come in a vision to every man, even the very atheist, he will wake up out of his sleep and he will say, I just saw the Son of God. Jesus wouldn't even have to say anything. Glory to God. Because the evidence, the evidence has been embedded in us. And that is how every man will be able to confess. The word of God says even the very devils that are telling people that there is no God. In St. James it says that the devils believe and tremble. They just don't serve him but they know. So when the devil infiltrate your mind to tell you that there is no God and you believe it and receive it, the devil goes one side, he and his minions, and laugh at you and say, look at the fool. The evidence, the DNA of God is inside that person that's making the person breathe because God is life. And the fool is listening to me telling them that there is no God. But we know that there is God and there's going to be a judgment. When Jesus Christ met uh, a man uh, filled up with demons the demons spoke and said Jesus Christ the son of God we know you have you come to torment us before the time do not let the devil fool you and destroy your soul he wants you to join him down there because he has lost heaven and you have been able to regain heaven by accepting the second Adam Jesus Christ of Nazareth don't let the devil fool you. Glory to God. So every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the honor of God the Father. Glory to God Almighty. Glory to God Almighty. And this is where we stop, but I'm going to rejoice a little bit by playing some tracks. 
before I exit this evening's program. I'm now can see I am blessed and he's chosen me to be blessed, 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 blessed. He's alive, he's alive. He's alive, he's alive, King Jesus is alive, he's alive, he's alive, King Jesus is alive, yeah, yeah, yeah. They took him to the cross and they thought that was the end. Mr. Elude Major, a pleasant good evening to you, sir. And hotel. So on the third day, long time no see. The number one barber in the Cayman Islands, Mr. Elude Major. I call him the sharp boss. Jesus is alive. He's alive. He's alive. King Jesus is alive. He's alive. He's alive. King Jesus is alive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When there was lightning and the sound of thunder, thunder, thunder. as the stone was rolled away, away, then he rose triumphantly from the grave. Come on, sing the song. He's alive. He's alive. He's alive. Oh, King Jesus is alive. He's alive. He's alive. King Jesus is alive, he's alive, he's alive, King Jesus is alive, play that song for Jesus. We have to do that one more time because I want you to get every drop of the sweet sugar of the word of God that if Jesus is in the vessel you have to smile because Jesus Christ was in the fiery flames the three Hebrew boys they smiled at the flames Daniel in the lion's den he smiled The disciples were in the prison and they did not worry who would go their bail. They sang praises and God delivered them from out of jail. Jesus said, I will lift my eyes to the hills from whence cometh my help. 
My help cometh from the Lord who made the heaven and the earth. Bless the Lord of my soul and bless his holy name. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. I'm glad. Yes, I'm glad. I'm glad I turned to Jesus. I'm glad I have turned to my Lord. Hey, I was out there in my shame. And Jesus called my name. I'm glad I have turned to my Lord. Don't let the devil fool you that there is no God. You know I was but a very little Highly Selassie is no God. As a matter of fact, Mr. Selassie himself declared that he served Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Would God deny himself? Somebody worship the true king. Thank God for my mother, Ivan Brown Bromley, who introduced me to him. I'm glad. And I've proven him for myself all the days of my life. I'm glad. Jabez. My God, never know all of the people them get out the rag and wave. If you know that Jesus sweet, stand on your feet. Come on, somebody worship him. Oh, Call that name. Jesus, me never know a son. The son of God. I see a fourth man in the fiery flames. And he looks like the son of the living God. Worship him. I never knew. I never knew. God, you're sweet. Glory to God. Glory to God. Blessed be the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Blessed be the conquering line of the tribe of Judah. Lord, you're sweet. Lord, you're sweet. This is it for breaking bread with Anthony Ricardo for this evening. God bless everyone who tuned in. Emmanuel name so sweet Jesus name so sweet Emmanuel name so sweet Jesus we never know I so you sweet Never know I so you sweet this is the happening so now listen to me. You see, if it's not Glory FM Radio, it's not radio. Change the dial. Oh. My God, never know. All of the people them get out the rock and wave. If you know that trees are sweet, stand on your feet. Let us praise him. Oh Lord, what we say? Jesus, me never know I saw you sweet. Lord, I saw you sweet. Lord, I saw you sweet. What we say? Jesus, me never know I saw you sweet. I would have served you long time ago. Lord, you sweet. Lord, you sweet. Lord, you sweet. Lord, you sweet. I really that time ago. Jesus, we never know I saw What a something sweet. God, sweet. My God, my God. I, I never knew. Jesus, we never know I saw your sweet. I would have served you long time ago. Lord, you sweet. Lord, you sweet. How many times? I know that I find out already. Lord, you sweet. But as it's coming, I'm in me have to testify. Lord, you sweet. How many times I've been through some fiery flames? Jesus. Some lion's den. God never saved me from it. 
he brought me through it and said, Anthony Ricardo, I am God. Whether you go through the flames or not, I am still God. Glory to God. What a God, what a God, what a God. Oh God, cover us in your blood. Remember us when you come into your kingdom. Let no soul be lost so that we can all converge into your glory and worship you throughout all eternity. God bless you all. Jesus, we never know I saw you sweet. Lord, I saw you sweet. Lord, I saw you sweet. Jesus, we never know I saw you sweet. I would have served you long.